供たちよこっちに行きなさいちょうど探してたところじゃどうしたんだピンマーヤ何かオイラたちに手伝ってほしいことでもあるのかいや子供たちはリユエコのために十分手助けをしてくれたこれ以上面倒はかけられんよ今回はバーヤの仲間たちと一緒に子供たちに贈り物を用意したんじゃお贈り物あ子供たちよまだリユエに来て間もないというのにもう夜渡りが上手になったみたいじゃのうじゃがこの贈り物は何が何でも受け取っておくれ以前先人の鈴を探すために壺に入ってもらった時おちびちゃんからいつも野宿をしてまだまだ旅は長いんじゃこのままじゃいかん幸いバーヤは年こそ取ったもののまだわずかながらおやまだ行っておらんかったかばあやたちはむかしてい君から恩恵を受けたことで三眼五剣の力を身に宿しておるんじゃいろいろと能力はあるがその中でも外形の力は小さな世界を想像することができる前に子供たちが入ったつぼもその力で簡単あんなすごいつぼなのに簡単にあの世界をなすためには浮世を離れる必要があるそんな大層なものじゃないよてい君はその昔山を動かし海を埋めたんじゃそれこそ神業と言えるものじゃろうまあ昔の話はこの辺にしてその贈り物じゃがまだそうだぞオイラたち探し物は得意だからな材料探しなら任せろまあまあ二人ともそうせかすでない<笑>もうすでに足の速いものに任せてある必要な材料は特別なんじゃ子供たちうん例えば敵歌集の河原下にある借金の泥とかじゃんそして塗り百合の根をたどって掘っていき運が良ければ借金の泥が一つじゃが敵歌集があんなことになってからはさらにそれより困難なのが双眼鏡園から採掘できる水覚石じゃ。国願城があそこで採掘を始めてからはそれもほとんど見当たらず水覚石は貴重な戦物で常人では千人の気に耐えられない長く触れれば体に害をなさあ,あの子がそれをピンバーヤは千人だしその子も千人なのかうんまあ彼女も千人と言えなくもないってなんでリーユエコーにはこんなにたくさん千人がいるんだどこに行っても千人に会えそうだし待てあ,ありえるかもしれんのバヤただいまおやこの二人は紹介しようこの子はエンヒさっき言ってた子じゃよ。エンヒ、こちらは旅人と彼の仲間じゃ。知っておるな。ああ、もちろん知ってる。千願軍の記録に詳しく載っていたから。以前、ゲーセン儀式の騒動で千願軍に不審者として指名手配され、絶運の間で千願軍を撃退し、ファデュイとも関わり、最後はバーヤと共に魔人を撃退。七星のおかげで容疑が晴れたと。うん実にそう私に会えなかったことがもっと早くに会えていたらその場で容疑を晴らすとまではいかなくても少なくとも改めて自己紹介しよう私は縁妃法律家だ法律に関する困りごとがあれば私を尋ねるといいああそうだ私の名刺を連絡方法と職場の住所が載ってる
急用ならその住所に手紙をああそれと初めてのお客さんには割引があって延費そろそろ本題に入ろう今の二人には法律の助けなんていらん子供たちやそう驚かないでおくれこの子はいつもオイラたちがこれまで会ってきた仙人とはなんか全然違うような仙人まあそうとも言えるお父様は自分のことを仙人だと言っていたかつてガンオテイ君と共に戦場に立っていたらしい戦いが終わった後帰郷してお母様と結婚したそうだそれから私が生まれた私が大きくなった後お父様はお母様と一緒になんか勝手だな仙人たちってリーユエコを守るため契約に従ってるんじゃないのかなんで急にそれを放り出して結婚したんだお父様から聞いた話によるとテイ君とはそのことについて話し合いをしたらしいそれで同意を得た上で故郷に帰ったそうだ結婚をした時テイ君からのまあそのことについては一旦置いておいてまあや頼まれてたものはほぼ揃ったぞけど水角石だけはどうしても探す今双眼鏡炎は完全に封鎖されていて入れそうにない申請をしようにもそれも通らそうじゃったかしかし水角石がないと炎皮何か案はあるかのう理由エコーを助けてくれたの分かってるばあやから何回も言われてたし双眼鏡炎から水角石を取れなくとも<笑>ちょっと待っててうわすっごく分厚い本だな何<笑>商業競技鉱石スネーシナヤうん、うん、見つけたこのクロッサルというスネージナヤの商人から希少な鉱石の法律に関して依頼されたことがある彼は水角石を仕入れてかんざしを作ろうとしていたそこに法的な問題が潜んでいないか聞かれたんだスネージナヤに持ち帰って売るらしいよし彼を探してくるもしかしたら水角石もしお前も一緒に来るのかあダメとは言わないが横で見ているだけにしてくれ法律を理由に警告してくるなんて彼女と行動するときは演技は活発な子じゃから彼女。Mr. Crossel, how's business been? Oh, good, very good. All thanks to your advice, Miss Yanfei. What brings you here today? <laughs> You're too kind. I was simply doing my job. Now, I believe that the last time we met, you mentioned that you were looking to source some Smaragdus Jadeite to make hairpins. Have there been any further developments on this front? Uh, well, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, in the end, I did acquire a small piece of Smaragdus Jadeite and had it fashioned into a pair of hairpins. Miss Yanfei, might I presume that you have an interest in the hairpins? I must apologize, I have already rented them out to a lady named Zhe Xiao. If you'd like to inspect them, you may have to wait quite some- Wait! Isn't Smaragdus Jadeite really rare? Aren't you worried about the hairpins getting damaged or lost while they're being rented out? No, I'm not worried in the slightest because I signed a contract with Ms. Zhe Xiao before renting them to her. The contract makes it quite clear that if she loses or damages the item in question, she must compensate me for its full original value. In return, I included a clause that guarantees the Smaragdus Jadeite is genuine, with a penalty of ten times the item's value payable by me to Miss Zhi Chiao in the event that it is shown to be guaranteed genuine, with ten times the value payable if this claim is shown to be false. Yes, these terms are very clear indeed. Of course. This way, both the client and I have the assurance we need. To ensure fairness, each of us has retained an original copy of the contract. In that case, might you know where Miss Your Chow lives? We'd like to pay her a visit and have a look at the hairpins. Oh, of course. She wrote her address down when we signed our contract. 
Here, I'll mark it on your map for you. Thanks a lot, Mr. Crossel. We'll be off now. Oh, whatever shall I do? Y yes, that's me. How do you do, Monsieur Chow? We understand from Mr. Crossel that you recently rented a pair of hairpins from him. My associates and I are very interested in them. Would you mind letting us take a look at them? The hairpins? <sighs> I can't lend them to you right now. I... I've lost them. I don't know how it could have happened. I always kept them right by my side, and I hadn't even worn them yet. I spent so much money on them. If I have to pay their original value... I... My family is in the ore business, too. But business has been suffering ever since the chasm was sealed off. We now have a backlog of paid-up orders just sitting around. So we've been having to purchase some stock from other ore merchants to complete them. A big banquet is coming up in a few days, and several ore merchants I know of will be there. I need this opportunity to mingle and discuss prices. That's what the hairpins were for, to... Well, to keep up appearances. I can't have them looking down on me. But now that I've lost the hairpins, what will I do? <sighs> Why does Paimon have a sudden strong sense of deja vu? Would you really? I sent a commission to the Adventurer's Guild, but I haven't heard anything back from them yet. Hold on. Don't run off looking for the hairpins just yet. Mr. Chow, would you let me have a look at the rental contract you signed? Huh? Well, I mean, sure, I have it right here. Here you are. Let me see. Hmm. That's right! Yante said she's a legal advisor, didn't she? Maybe true, though surely there must be a win-win solution. Right, I finished reading the contract. The terms are very clear, and they do indeed stipulate that you must pay Mr. Crossel the original value of the hairpins as compensation for the loss. Furthermore, the contract also expressly states that the amount of compensation must take current market prices, and given the rarity of Smaragdus Jadeite, I fear that the final amount of compensation may end up being significant. Even higher? Oh, no. Uh-oh. Just how it looks like she's about to faint. However, all of this is assuming that it is indeed genuine Smaragdus Jadeite that was inlaid into the hairpins. Did you really have to pause before saying that part? Anyway, the hairpins are lost, so how exactly would we be able to find out if the Jadeite is genuine or not? Whichever way you look at it, we've got to start by finding those hairpins. Except that if we found the hairpins, there'd no longer be any need to check whether the Jadeite is genuine, would there? Uh, seems right. Please. Please, I... However much it is, I will have to pay it. My family are merchants, after all. It's vital that we keep our word and respect our contract. Now that it's come to this, I really shouldn't keep Crossel in the dark any longer. I'll go and inform him of the issue, and then... ...negotiate the amount of compensation. Mm, yes, legally speaking, it seems this is the most sensible course of action. But before that, I have some questions about the hairpins. So hold on a moment, Mr. Chow. When you first touched the hairpins, what did you feel? What did I feel? Well... I remember that the gemstones set into the pins were perfectly smooth to the touch. My family has seen much jade pass through its hands in the past, so I am quite certain of my judgment in this matter. Hmm. Smooth to the touch. No, it's nothing. I just need to re-examine a few things. Let's head over to Mr. Crossel's. Ah, Miss Yanfei, you've returned. With Miss Jichao and Toe, too, I see. How are the hairpins? I trust you're quite... <laughs> About that. You lost them? Are you serious? Do you have any idea how expensive they were? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Truly, I am. I'll pay the compensation as per our contract. Every last mora. Mora? 
Do you have any idea what I had to go through to get my hands on that Smaragdus J- I- I just don't- <sighs> Forget it. Talking won't bring them back. Since Miss Yanfei is here, I suppose we can just have her estimate the amount that needs to be paid. No problem. But before I can give an official estimate, I'll need to do a little market research. Ah, yes. And if I may just confirm again... It was, in fact, genuine Smaragdus Jade Eye inlaid into the hairpins, correct? Of course! Genuine article guaranteed, or I pay back ten times the value- All right, understood. I'll conduct some market research, and once I'm back, I'll provide an official assessment of the sum owed by Mr. Chow in compensation. Please wait here, Mr. Crossel. Thank you very much. <laughs> How could she lose my hairpins? She'd better pay every last mora that they're worth. Looks like I'll have to find some way to raise that money. Please wait, Mr. Chow. I have something to discuss with you. It's not convenient to speak here, so let's find somewhere that we can sit and talk in more detail. You can't beat the atmosphere here and be that. <laughs> How could she lose my... I should open a store here. Why do they have to give me that... Miss Yenfei, what is this about? Are you... Are you here to tell me how much I owe? No. What I wanted to talk about is, there is a chance that the ore laid on those hairpins may not be Smaragdus Jadeite after all. Uh, what do you mean? Are you implying that you already sneaked off and found them? Obviously not. I'm no adventurer, let alone a member of the guild. I don't run thankless, time-consuming errands for a living. Let's just say I made some deductions. I don't know if Granny told you this, but Smaragdus Jadeite is found deep underground and contains very concentrated elemental energy. If mere mortals come into contact with it, well, they'll be sick in the best case. And in the worst case, they could even experience a dramatic change of personality. It most certainly would not be smooth to the touch. Mr. Chow, did you at any time feel unwell while the hairpins were in your possession? No. Not at all. I felt perfectly fine the whole time. Not even the slightest bit unwell. I didn't... Hmm. Now that is strange. I noticed earlier that there were elemental traces in Mr. Crossel's vicinity. If I have deduced correctly, he may still have the Smaragdus Jadeite in his possession. If that's the case, we should go confront him right now and expose his dirty scam right to his face! Absolutely not. If we were to confront him now, there's no way he would admit to it. Eventually, he would find some argument to compel us to leave. And then, he'd throw the Smaragdus Jadeite into the sea the moment we were gone. After that, he would simply insist that Mr. Chow pay up per the contract. He would lose nothing. Meanwhile, we would have to look under every stone in Liyue, hoping and praying that the hairpins do actually... It's so vivid that Paimon thinks it might be experience talking. Oh, it certainly is. I've seen my fair share of situations like this, and brute force methods are certainly one way of resolving them. Fortunately, I have far more elegant solutions at my disposal. I'll share them with you. Well then, since you're so experienced in dealing with problems like this, perhaps you could help me, Miss Yunfei. Oh, that won't be a problem. But first, Mr. Chow, can I ask you to please sign this contract? Huh? Does there have to be a contract for everything? Paimon can't feels like Yanfei is even more concerned with them than a certain someone else we know. These are my formal terms of engagement. Everything prior to now has just been pro bono advice. But for me to investigate any further, I require a written contract. Any work commissioned but not bound by a contract cannot be relied upon. I understand. Then I will be glad to place this matter into your capable hands if you will take it, Miss Yanfei. No problem. Just sign here, and I'll sign too. Okay, now write your address here, and then sign on this page as well. And I'll also need your signatures on pages 5, 7, and on the very last page. Finally, if you could just use this ink pad to make a handprint over here. <sighs> this contract has so many pages! Paimon's all- Alright, that should do it. My fees are the same as always, and they're written in the contract. Have a look through, and let me know if you have any questions. I've had a read through. 
Everything checks out. Well then, here's your copy of the contract. I will retain the other copy. Not for now, no. Despite how intractable this problem might sound, it will actually be quite straightforward to resolve once we've got some things squared away. I don't believe you have been part of an investigation like this before. In which case, hopefully this should be quite the experience. Miss Yunfei, I have to ask. Because, as it happens, I'm currently trying to acquire some Smaragdus Jadeite myself. I notice strong traces of geo-energy around Mr. Crossel, so perhaps he has, in fact, secured some. Whether he actually made it into an item of jewelry or not is a separate matter. But either way, it's a lead. As long as we follow it, who knows? Also, the idea of someone abusing the law to their advantage, I won't stand for it. But again, let's not dwell on this. Let's go to... Hmm, where can we find someone who pros... Ha! Ah, I've got it! Let's pay a visit to Shito, the boss of the Jade Mystery. He's a professional when it comes to working with stone and ore. If Mr. Crossel had his ore worked on at all, Shito would undoubtedly have been his first choice. Why, hello there, honored customers. Welcome to... Th oh, it, it, it's you, Miss Yanfei. <gasps> Sh surely not more spurious claims that, that my jade betting is rigged and, and no one can ever win. Oh, I swear on all that is sacred. No, nothing of the sort. Has a Snesh 9 merchant named Crossel enlisted your ore processing services recently by any chance? A Snezhnayan merchant named Krosel, you say? Hmm, I do remember that. He brought me a piece of ore, claiming that it was Smaragdus Jada. That was the first time I'd ever encountered it, so I had no way of telling if it was really Smaragdus Jadeite or not. But if a customer insists, far be it from me to contradict them. He was quite generous with his money, too, so I didn't give it too much thought. I processed the ore as per his request. Hmm... Do you have any leftover debris from your work on it? Uh, why, yes. It was my first time encountering this ore, after all, so I kept a few loose shavings to study myself later. Thank you, sir. We'll take a look at them. Try your luck betting on Jade? If my eyes don't deceive me, the cross-sections and patterning suggest that, yes, it's not particularly rare, nor is it especially valuable. It's used to make jewelry all the time. I've heard it said that Smaragdus Nephrite is in fact the outer layer of Smaragdus Jadeite, though no one's ever proven it. A thin layer of separation, huh? If you must see for yourself, try examining these shavings for traces of elemental energy. Smaragdus nephrite is an entirely ordinary ore, containing no elemental energy whatsoever. Is that so? Well, we might as well give elemental sight a shot. So, did you find anything? So they really are different. But wait, how come Jinchao was able to tell what it was just by looking at the shot? There's nothing special to it. It just so happens that I've come across a great many of these. These two stones actually look very similar. Someone without a deep understanding of them would find it very difficult to tell them apart. There may be only a subtle difference for the casual viewer, but that translates to an astronomical difference in terms of the market price. And, I'm sure, a significant difference in the cost of having them carved into shape. All right, let's focus up. We're going off on a tangent. But, never mind, Shirto. Why would Mr. Crossel... Unusual actions have unusual reasons behind them. Let's take some of these shavings back to Chateau. Miss Yenfei? Might I be so bold as to inquire? If you could just confirm for me once more, sir, Mr. Crossel did indeed claim that the ore he brought to your store was, in fact, Smaragdus Jadeite, did he not? Uh, yes, that's right. I still have a record of the job with me, in fact. Um, here. It says quite clearly, uh, one chunk Smaragdus Jadeite. Then I have no further questions. But could I borrow the processing record and these stone shavings? Of course. But might I ask why you need... Oh, I have my reasons. Ah, yes. 
please sign here on this affidavit. This document shall serve as signed proof that these stone shavings originated from the, uh, ore that Mr. Crossel brought to your store. Please read it carefully. Hmm, yes, I see, I see. <laughs> Forgive me for asking again, Miss Yenfei, but might I know the nature of the incident on this occasion? I wouldn't say there's been an incident, just a minor issue. Thank you, sir. Uh, With this hard evidence to back us up, Crossel won't dare try to deny what he did. On the contrary, this is far from sufficient to build a case. We need to find something a little more compelling. If you want to make jewelry, you need a professional jewelsmith. Let me think. Jewelry. Jewelry. Hmm. Aha! Got it! Singsy. She often helps people to find a jewelsmith. Let's go pay her a visit. Well, that was quick. How can you know so many people? Because lots of people come to me for legal advice every day. As you know, Liyue Harbor is the city of contracts. And contracts, well, I should say laws, are very important to us. But the amendments made by the Tianchuan to our laws are unnecessarily complicated. How can I put this? It just seems like they're hard to understand and impo- As such, legal advisors like myself provide quite the popular service indeed. So you help them make sense of the law. But didn't you say that it's hard to understand and impossible to finish? Yes, well, that's no obstacle because I've memorized all the legal codices. You memorized them? <laughs> you sound surprised. Knowing the law inside out is illegal with- Oh, this has nothing to do with being an adeptus. I just like reading things. Again, with that casual tone- Well, that's that then. Let's go look for Singsi. Miss Yenfei, it's you. Has something happened? Did the client have no further trouble from then on? Yes, of course. I'm just here to ask you a few questions. Has a merchant by the name of Crossel asked you to put him in contact with a jewelsmith recently? Crossel? Yes, I remember him. He's a merchant from Snezhnaya, no? Yeah, he came to me with a chunk of something he called... The design of the hairpins that he gave me was quite intricate, so it took me some work to find someone who was up to the job. Eventually, I found an older jewelsmith who made them exactly according to his specification. This order was on hold for a very long time, and only completed quite recently, which is why I remember it. Doesn't seem like there's any evidence to be found here. Miss Singsy, I'd like for you to confirm for me once more. When Mr. Crossel commissioned you to find him a jewelsmith, did he or did he not assert that the material he presented to you that day was called Smaragdus Jadeite? Yes, I'm sure of it. The hairpins were made using many expensive materials, and the asking price was quite high, so we had to put this transaction on record with the min- Mr. Crossel wasn't very familiar with the necessary procedures, so I filed it on his behalf. I also kept a copy for my own records. See for yourself. The item is called Smaragdus Jadeite Twin Phoenix Pins. The inlaid gemstone is re recorded as Smaragdus Jadeite. The document even has the official seal of the Ministry on it. Thank you, Singsi. And now, could you let me borrow the- Sure. It isn't serving much purpose here anyway. I take it then that there's been some more trouble? Nothing you need to worry about. Just a minor issue. I'll return your document as soon as I'm done with it. Why is everyone's first reaction always to assume someone or Hmm, I believe we have almost all the evidence we need. We just need to make one last trip. Let's go to- A weirdo with the snake around his neck? What do you want to speak to him for? Because only he can provide an authoritative statement confirming that Smaragdus Jadeite is harmful to the human body. Once we have this final piece of evidence in our hands, we can wrap this case up. Jewelry's out of stock. My, my. To what do I owe the pleasure? Though I'm afraid that if you're looking for our little Chi-Chi, she's out gathering her. And if it isn't Miss Yenfei as well. Now that's an even rarer honor. What business brings you here, might I inquire? 
Some charlatans peddling ineffectual medicines again, no- No, no. I'm here this time to ask if you're familiar with Smaragdus Jadeite. Smaragdus Jadeite? Why, yes, there is some information about it included in the sixth commentary on the Seven Mountain Treatises. The Seven Mountain Treatises states that this substance springs forth from stone marrow within the mountains and will bring disaster to any mere mortals who touch it. It is abundant in elemental energy, so if someone without a vision is in contact with it for a prolonged period, best case scenario, they fall ill. Worst case scenario, they'll suffer great changes in personality and their illness will only ever get worse. <sighs> Anyway, I'm sure you didn't come all this way just to chit-chat. Knowing you, Yenfei, and given the specific nature of your question, I suppose that you're about to ask me to write an official affidavit attesting to the pharmaceutical peculiarities of Smaragdus Jadeite? That is indeed the case. If you would be so kind, Dr. Baiju. No trouble at all. It's just a single document. Won't take me a moment. I would mention, though, that you are not the only one who's developed a curiosity for Smaragdus Jadeite recently. A Snezhnayan merchant came to ask me about it not long ago. But after I gave him my reply, his expression shifted to one of remarkable disappointment. I wonder, Miss Yenfei, if your pressing business might be related to this Snezhnayan merchant? Ah, you needn't concern yourself about that, Dr. Baiju. Thank you for penning us that document. I'll make sure to compensate you in due course. You're too kind. <laughs> Take care now, everyone. <laughs> Let's play! Is it just Paimon, or does it feel like he was fishing for something back there? Dr. Baiju's always been like that. Well, we have the evidence we need. Let's go find Mr. Crossel. Miss Yanfei, have you finished your investigation? I trust you will now be in a position to assess the compensation. Yes, my investigation is indeed concluded. I can now provide a final figure for the amount payable. Wonderful. Well then, please, could you do the honors, Miss Yanfei? Of course. Ahem, <clears throat> according to the stipulations of the contract. Mr. Crossel, you must pay Mr. Chow ten times the original transaction price in Mora. Sure. Wait, what? M me pay her? Surely there's been some kind of mistake, Miss Yanfei. Not at all. According to my investigations and the material evidence that we've gathered, the substance claimed to be Smaragdus Jadeite that was inlaid within the Smaragdus Jadeite twin phoenix pins that you rented out to Mr. Chow was in... Now, the contract states very clearly that ten times the price shall be paid should the article not be genuine. Accordingly, you are liable for this sum, which is payable to Mr. Chow in Mora. Material evidence? What material evidence? Why, Miss Yanfei, you cannot frame me like I spent a huge sum to obtain that Sparagdus Jadeite, and yet you claim that the ore inlaid on the hairpins is somehow fake? I demand to see your evidence. Indeed. Only a testimony from an expert witness involved in the processing of the ore can serve as an authoritative assessment of whether it is genuine. Trav, <clears throat> if we want to determine whether the ore is genuine, we need to start with evidence from the Jade Mystery. Clearly, you still have a few things. This is a processing record from the Jade Mystery, along with stone samples and an affidavit signed by the business owner, Chateau. Seriously? Even the boss there couldn't differentiate between Smaragdus Jadeite and Smaragdus Nephrite. How does this prove anything? In any case, Smaragdus Nephrite is the outer layer of Smaragdus Jadeite. So I had him cut away the Nephrite, he returned the valuable Jadeite core to me, and some Nephrite samples remain in the store. What am I missing? Th that's an unsubstantiated belief. Well, your claim that my ore is fake is just as unsubstantiated. And we are here to talk about evidence, aren't we? Ugh. Looks like our first piece of evidence didn't convince him at all. He seems like he came prepared. Which part evidence? Something legally binding? <laughs> this document proves that my hairpins are the real deal, doesn't it? This is the Ministry's seal, after all. 
It shows that the ore inlaid on the pins is indeed smarag- Our second piece of evidence didn't work either. And this guy's getting more belligerent by the set. Hmm. You know, you could be right. Perhaps the hairpins are the real deal after- Of course I'm right. All the evidence shown supports my story. Well, hang on a moment now, because I do recall one final piece of evidence that we haven't revealed. Traveler, would you do the honors? This shall serve- what? What's this? Smaragdus Jadeite springs forth from Stone Marrow within the mountains and will bring disaster to any mere mortals who touch it. Sustained contact with Smaragdus Jadeite over a prolonged period will, in less serious cases, cause a mild malady, while in serious cases, the patient may suffer a dramatic change of personality and... Mr. Crossel, were you aware of these peculiar properties of Smaragdus Jadeite? I... I had no idea. No idea, you say? Hmm, I'd guessed as much. But for you to have rented out such a dangerous item, I'm afraid that this falls outside the scope of my work, but within that of... However, I'm sure that the Ministry will be relatively lenient, considering that, as you say, you were ignorant of the danger you posed. Don't worry, Mr. Crossel. I will make sure that all the evidence presented here will be handed over to the Ministry. I trust that you'll give them your full cooperation in their investigation. What? Wait! Wait! I... <sighs> I knew. Oh, so you knew? Oh, dear, Mr. Crossel. But if you knew of Smaragdus Jadeite's dangerous properties beforehand... Huh? No, uh, I... <sighs> the hairpins aren't actually... Aren't actually inlaid with genuine Smaragdus Jadeite? Is that what you were about? You do understand, Mr. Crossel, that this means that you will have to pay Mr. Chow ten times the original price... Mr. Crossel, your answer, please. My client and I are waiting. I... 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 Yep, he's seriously intimidating right now. I admit it. I confess. The ore I had in laid on those hairpins was... was Smaragdus Nephrite. But I'm a victim in all of this, too. I invested a great deal of time and money into acquiring that small amount of Smaragdus Jadeite in the hopes of turning it into a piece of jewelry that would fetch... But after receiving it and carrying it around for a few days, I started to feel extreme discomfort. I couldn't sleep a wink or eat a single bite. I... I was in a constant state of agit... I went to Boo Boo Pharmacy to get myself checked out, only to discover that this sort of stone cannot be worn as jewelry. But how could I let all... That's why I had another pair of hairpins made from Smaragdus Nephrite, which is almost indistinguishable from Smaragdus Jadeite. I kept the real Smaragdus Jadeite in a specially made box. I daren't touch it again. I was worried that someone would see through it. Which is why I only dared to rent them out, not sell them. Exactly! If they weren't the real deal, why'd you make her pay so much? I... I didn't want to either. But when I purchased that Smaragdus Jadeite, some of my business partners found out. I knew they'd... If word got out that I sold a pair of fake hairpins, then... My days in this line of business would be... Alright, let's cut the appeals phase right there. I failed to see what bearing any of this has on your transaction with my client. According to the contract... Ten... ten times. Crossel looks like he could faint any second. As for me, according to my contract with Mr. Chow, 20% of that sum will go to... 20%? That's as much as I spent on that... Um, there's no need. It's fine. You don't have to pay me that much, Mora. Even if the Smaragdus Jadeite on those hairpins was fake, I still bear responsibility for losing them. Legally or not... Uh, Ms. Jichow. However, Mr. Crossel, since you have no use for that chunk of Smaragdus Jadeite, why don't you give it to me instead? I'll con- What? But I- All right, then. This cursed rock's brought me enough grief as it is- Miss Yenfei, I'll turn this Smaragdus Jadeite over to you. I trust that it will suffice as remuner- Well, um, that's not- Quite how the rules say this should... Thanks so much for your help this time, Miss Yenfei. When you have the time, I'll be sure to visit and express my thanks more appropriately. Oh, come on. No need to stand on ceremony. Now, if I may confirm this again, Mr. Chow, have you and Mr. Crossel come to an under... Hmm? Well, yes, I believe we have. Well then, that's good. Mr. Crossel, it seems that my client has no further claims against you. Is... is that so? That's good. Actually... Mr. Crossel, I'd like to talk business for a second, if I may. I could see from the hairpins you produce that you're very skilled in jewelry design. 
My family, on the other hand, works in the ore business, and we have a fair stock if we could join forces. Your jewelry designs and our choice ores, I think we could do some fine business between... I, uh, let me think for a moment. Well, that's that. And we've got the Smaragdus Jadeite that Granny wants, too. Exactly. Usually when someone tells us they've lost something, we end up searching all over the place for it. But this time, you managed to solve the problem with just a big stack of ducks. <laughs> Even though the solution didn't involve actually finding the hairpin. The right solution depends on your perspective on the problem. The objective of my client, Mr. Chow, was to reduce her liability to pay compensation. So, rather than looking high and low for some hairpins, proving that the rent is an adeptus. Speaking of, you took part in that battle, didn't you? In which case, Liyue Harbor is now a city ruled by human. The title of Adeptus means precious little to me compared to my job as a legal advisor. In any case, don't you think that the Liyue Harbor of today needs legal consultancy far more than it needs adeptal powers? Paimon can think of someone who would definitely disagree with your reasoning. Well, since we got what we came for, it's time to pay Granny a visit. I bet she's been on tenterhooks for a while now. If we could join forces, I, uh... This is a neighborhood. Ah, you've returned. How did it go? Were you... Good, good. Then we have all the material. Well, if we're all set, Granny, I'll get going now. Got a ton of clients waiting for me back at the office. Oh, you. All right, then. Go see to your business. Granny should be able to handle the rest. I'm off, then. Bye. Oh, yes, Traveler. Make sure you don't lose the business card I gave you. I've been looking into the laws of other nations as well. If you should ever bump into any trouble with the law, come find me directly. Regulars get discounts. Come now, child. Are you leaving or are you not? If you have no wish to leave, perhaps you'd like to help me clean my teapot. Hmm? <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm leaving! <sighs> that child. Goodness knows where she learned to be so rambunctious. Her father was hardly so riotous or fond of talking nonsense back in the day. Ah, indeed she is. Liyue has changed, and the Adepti must also learn to change. Yanfei might be overly garrulous, but she is also the most intimately acquainted with the city among us all. Ah, Liyue... All right, then. Let us speak of this no more. Back on topic, I believe that I still owe you a little gift. Oh, Paimon's so excited! Ha <laughs> ha It is but a single teapot. It shan't take long at all. Just wait here for a moment. Ho <laughs> ho! There we go. This serenity pot is all yours now. Hold it firmly. If you were to drop it, oh, goodness, who knows what might happen. Take these blueprints with you as well. You'll need them. Wait a minute, Granny. How exactly are we supposed to use this teapot? Oh, you needn't worry about that. I've already arranged for a certain little helper to await you within this teapot. She will explain everything you need to know. There's even a great big house in 
the middle too. Huh. But there's just a whole load of nothing around it. Fine, I can't do that. Uh, well, you're the one with the sword anyway. You do it. Still, why is it so empty here apart from that house? Oh, wait a second. What is that? Would it gliding be faster? Well, it seems that we have a visitor. It's a huge finch! Excuse me, I am not a finch. I am a teapot spirit, and you may call me... Um, hang on a moment. What am I supposed to be called again? Oh, call me. I suppose you may call me Tubby. So you're the little helper, Madam Ping mentioned? Madam Ping? Oh, you must mean Ping. Yes, she did summon me here. She told me much about you. You may leave all matters regarding the upkeep of this realm to me. Your journey may be far from over. But at least this way, you will not want for a comfortable place to sleep. Though it is the Adepti who create realms such as this, they generally do not have the time of day to attend to the banal matter of their maintenance. Thus, we Teapot Spirits were created to help guard their realms and manage their affairs. You may consider me a butler, if you will. Now, allow me to explain this realm to you. Have you any blueprints on you? Specifically, blueprints with beautiful rooms, chairs, and the like. As long as you have a blueprint, you can refashion this realm however you please. Blueprints? Oh, that's right! Granny handed us some when she gave us the teapot, didn't she? Let's take them out! Yes, these are the blueprints I'm talking about. Go on, open them up. Just commit the image of the objects to memory and prepare the necessary materials. Then simply release the thought from your mind and the object in the blueprint shall appear within this teapot. Wow! Is that all it takes? Then we could build a whole city inside, couldn't we? Mm, I doubt it. A golden-eyed adeptus explained this to me at some point in the past. He said... That even though subspace creation is a product of adeptal power, even that has its limits. This world is not a true one, after all. It provides merely a moment of brief respite from the mortal realm, not a means of escaping it entirely. A golden-eyed adeptus? Paimon wonders, who could that be? I hardly remember myself. What's more, I have never seen that adeptus. Well, let's not dwell on that. Have a look around. Best you get accustomed to this realm. If there's anything you would like to ask, just look for me.